you know, he kind of goes in here somewhere, probably towards the bottom of B tier. I think his peak was very good. I think he just kind of has squandered his career, really, um, with behind the scenes issues and, and shit like that. Um, yeah, KNG, high peak. Again, it's difficult to justify putting him up here because we just don't have enough of a, an evidence base, a sample size of games in the biggest tournaments against the best teams to justify putting him any higher. Bit of a squandered career. MSL, uh, yeah, you know, was severely limited as an AWPA. Um, has that one MVP from that one tournament, the North one in like Stockholm or something in 2017 or something like that. Um, but yeah, just not, was never a particularly great AWPA. Very, very limited player. NATO Sapphics. I'm actually going to put at the bottom of C tier. Haven't seen like tons of him AWPing, but what I actually have seen, he kind of, Definitely can go and hang with Crucial and Snatchy and be like a tier three kind of farmer. Um, haven't seen enough of him justify him putting him higher. So yeah, that's where he goes. Don't know who this is. Apologies to you. Twist, yep. Um, you know, just never did it in tier one. You know, in his time for Nip, just looked severely, you know, like he was struggling. Apparently, like nerves or whatever behind the scenes were a big, you know, factor in why Twist never live up to his potential, but yeah woxic woxic again you know this is like the classic kind of orpa syndrome of you know flashy fast inconsistent good peak very nice peak particularly game to game peak but across a whole tournament probably gonna be limited fallen Fallen goes for me at the top of the A tier around that JW level. I think Fallen at his best on SK Gaming was this very mobile, generally actually quite aggressive, um, very good at making sure the team, the enemy team, didn't know where he was or where he was playing. He was always moving. And obviously, outside of his orping, basically the reason for the brazilian scene growing to the size and stature that it has the father of the brazilian scene in csgo if we're being honest so props to him for that as an orpa i don't think his peak was on the level of kenny s guardian shiro device the absolute elites of this game so that's why i put him where i am putting him but don't get me wrong fallen you know, his career speaks for itself. What a player, what a man to have in our scene. Yeah, this is uh, Yell. This is Yell, right? Sorry, I'm just double checking this and I'm not making up. This is Yell. This is Yell. Yeah, um, I've not seen much of Yell. Probably going to put him in the don't know, but he would, I, what I have seen of him. He's of the don't knows. He, him and Farlig are the two don't knows I've seen the most of. He would probably go in D or C, but I, I, I'm going to be fair. Haven't seen enough of him, I think, to justify it. Uh, this is a core. I'm going to put him in the B tier just because the actual best that we ever saw of a core, I think, was like a B tier level. The problem with a core is that his time on mouse was just so fucking woeful that like it's it's hard to remember him in a positive light but like from his time on mad lions this is acor right i haven't just made this up hang on let me just fucking check some of these players like uh, this i'm pretty sure this is acor the thing is i just don't recognize that jersey is that an old mouse sports no that is definitely acor is that an old mouse sports it was that a tricked jersey is that from when he was on tricked but yeah anyway you understand my point. From his Mad Lions peak level, we'll put him in the B tier. Shmooya! 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 I'll put him in B tier, boys. I'll put him in B tier. Shout out to my British boy! Yeah, um, you know, you can call this one biased or whatever, but I think we've seen Shmooya absolutely fucking stomps tier 2 and tier 3. He is definitely a tier 1 level of AWPA. And I think the peak that we have seen from him could easily match players like Woxic, Poison, and Cirque. You know, it's just a shame he can't stay on a team for more than a few months without getting kicked. British CS. Uh, yeah, this one's super easy. Bam. Nope. Bam. He's the GOAT. He's the best player to ever touch the game. 
I, I don't think I need to say too much about simple. I think this is very, very easy placement. His stats back it up. The eye test backs it up. Some of the most iconic plays this game has ever seen have been made by simple. Yeah. What more can I say? God with the rifles. God with the AWP. Absolute juggernaut of a player. Big up simple number one. Uh, Mertz. Uh, didn't think he was very good. Uh, he recently has actually come back to the game. Um, so fair play to him for coming back from Valorant. Um, you know, I'll probably say he's like here somewhere. Um, yeah, a bit of a, a, a tier three kind of farmer. Looked good in tier three. Never really impressed when he played um, better teams. Yeah. Right, so I believe this is eye disbalance. Um, just not seen enough of him. Um, Nork uh, of NIP, yeah. Um, didn't look good enough for like a top tier one team. Didn't look terrible either. It's doing a pretty decent job on Apex. So I'll probably put him like here. Um, yeah, you know, seems like a perfectly serviceable AWP for kind of a tier two, lower tier one level. Um, but I've never really seen anything from him to suggest he can match like these guys. I would say once you get into the B tier, these guys could carry a decent chunk of a tier one tournament for you. That is kind of how I'm seeing these guys as an AWPer. Um, but they would probably not be enough to like solo carry through a whole tournament on their own. Whereas once you get to A and S tier, these guys can put their team on their backs and carry them throughout the whole event. Uh, Mantu, I am going to put him at the bottom of the B tier. I think the problem with Mantu is when the crunch time hits, he folds like fucking origami. He is just doing like 17 folds and becoming a beautiful swan, but he's not orping very well. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mantu man, but you just disappear at the like vital moments every time I've seen OG play. Mantu goes missing if it's at all important or deep in an event or anything like that. He'll smurf the group stages. He'll he'll you know look like a fucking absolute god until like the quarters and the semis and the good teams turn up and then he just just disappears. I I, I think it's got to be all up here for Mantu, honestly. Um, I hope he can sort those issues out because I think he's explosive and exciting when he is good. But yeah, you know, he, I just I need to see him turn up like against the best teams, really. Uh, safe. I haven't seen enough of safe, to be honest. Uh, so I'm going to put him in don't know. Don't know who this is. Don't know who this is. Uh, Oscar. Oscar, yeah, he's a, he's a B tier kind of guy. In fact, I, I actually place him as a high B tier. Oscar has carried tournaments. In fact, he might even be like, I'm going to put him in the top of B tier. I think he is a borderline A tier player. Again, quite mercurial. Oscar, um, both in terms of the way he plays, but also his personality. He's a bit of, um, you know, an eccentric character by all accounts. Um, but yeah, he if you go back to like 2019, for example, Oscar... Absolutely balling it, man. He he it was banging in tier one tournaments. He is the kind of player who can carry the majority of a tier one event. Yeah, Oscar, really, really good player. Not to be underestimated how good Oscar was. If you only know him from his Sinner's time, you don't know the true peak of Oscar. Him on mouse, yeah, what a fucking dangerous weapon he was. Uh, this is the fucking skate orper. I forget his name, but just haven't seen enough of him. Degstar. This is probably going to be my most controversial placement, but Degstar is the fucking truth, man. This guy is so, so good. He is, again, one of those CIS orpers where if he got on, like, a Na'Vi or a Gambit, I think we would see him making the HLTV top 20. It's just fucking amazing. I, I seriously think his actual peak... This is probably the one, right, where I am giving him the most credit for how good I think he can be versus how good maybe we've actually seen him be over, a, let's say, tournament's length of time. Yeah, I'm, you're just going to have to believe me on this. Degster is fucking lit. Uh, Sprout Orper, don't know, I haven't seen enough. Team One's Orper, don't know, I haven't seen enough. Don't know. Right, now we're getting to some... I'm just also going to bam and... Uh, 
and bam. Um, not gonna like you know get rid of the ones I don't know. These are the interesting ones left. Um, oh fuck, I've forgotten his name. X, um, like Forza and shit like that. Exit power. That's it. Got there in the end. Bam. Not going to talk too much about those guys, but these are the interesting ones that we got left, right? And this video is already getting fucking long. Ziwu, bam, up there. Don't know how you could say anything other than Ziwu's absolute peak is to hard fucking carry a tier one tournament. He's done it so many times with Vitality. Yeah, he's only second, in my opinion, to Simple in terms of peak that we've ever seen in CSGO. What a great player to have in the scene. Somebody who pushed Simple and pushed, I think, Simple onto new heights. Yeah, just a legend. Zero is a legend. And who knows, by the time, you know, we get like three, four, five years down the line. Obviously, he's having a bit of a wobble at the moment, but he could end up being the GOAT. Like, I think that the talent level and the ability of Zero is there. I don't know if he has as much of a winner's mentality as a player like Simple. Um, but I don't know Zewu well enough to say that for certain. That's just going off of kind of external impressions. But yeah, Zewu is up there as one of the best who have ever touched this game. It's supremely talented. Again, like Simple, God with the AWP, God with the rifles. Um, only person who measures up to Simple, in my opinion, in terms of just pure talent and ability. Um, what an amazing two players, by the way, to have in our game at the same time, especially considering Nico not as an AWP with a rifle and players like Shiro are also playing at the same time. Like the, the top sort of five, four or five players in CSGO are so fucking strong at the moment. And it's like a, it's a privilege. It really is a privilege to be watching CSGO in this time. Jame, my boy, Jame. Oh, I think Jame is supremely talented. I think he's a very, very high peaking AWPA. I think he has issues with his play style. Yes, Jame time. Big meme. Ha ha, he's saving again. But in all seriousness, Sometimes I think Jame could benefit from being a little bit more aggressive. I think Virtus Pro slightly over egg that play style of being like very fundamental on the T side, very, very methodical and take the map control and go slowly. And I think they could do sometimes with Jame being a little bit more explosive. He's got the ability, got the talent to do it. But I think Jame it does sit just a little bit above this tier of Orpa. He's just a little bit more consistent than I think all of these. I think his peak is a little bit higher than all of these. I'm going to put him ahead of Degster as well. I think that's fair. Yeah, just a supremely talented player. And I think people underestimate because of the whole Jame time, you know, saving memes, being too passive. I think people underrate Jame. I think he's actually a very, very good player. And if you go and look at the stats, they bear that out, as does the eye test. When you see some of the plays that Jame can pull off, not very many Orpers can do what Jame does. Hades! You, my friend, are going to go like... Uh... The thing is, Hades as an Orper is, is I to decent. Hades overall as a player and what he contributes to ends, I think he's very good. Um, I'm going to put him in this B tier. I'm going to put him, you know, like around here. I think he's probably not as good as like these ex very explosive players. But yeah, maybe I'm just being biased by what Hades I think brings to ends overall. I think he's a very good clutch player. I think he's willing to sacrifice uh, his personal stats sometimes to benefit the team. Do I think Hades could hard carry a tier one event for the majority of it probably not as just as a pure orper i'm gonna put him at the bottom of b tier i'm gonna put him alongside man too and maybe if you made hades like a star and like we're like we're gonna build the whole team around him maybe he could i'm gonna put him at the bottom of b tier for now alu alu i think alu goes here in the b tier i think a little bit more limited maybe than some of these very explosive orpers which is why i put him below them but i think yes i think in his prime he was and could carry a good chunk of a tier one event 
massively underrated i think in these days because towards the end of his time on ends he wasn't like a super high stats kind of player and i think a lot of people attribute the collapse of that very popular ends team with alexi b leading i think a lot of people probably somewhat fairly attribute the collapse of that team to alu so i think he ends up being a little bit harshly remembered because of that but yeah alu at his peak was a pretty decent orper yeah not up in the true elites of the game um god the more i see dexter there the more i think that that's probably massively overrating dexter whatever we'll back it it's it's the one that i think is dodgy it's the it's the one really dodgy one i'm fucking i'm backing it come on and last, but by no means least, Brokey. I think what we have seen from Brokey in the start of 2022, I think if you'd have asked me at the end of last year, Brokey would have been in the B tier somewhere nice and high, but would have been in the B tier. What we have seen from Brokey so far this year, he's been one of the best players in the world in the first three months of 2022. He's looking like a fucking legit player. And if he keeps playing like he's played so far this year, yeah my man's gonna start like creeping up you know creeping up if we're going on peak tournament performance what this man did in katavisa was pretty fucking dirty it, it was like it was it was getting towards this sort of level of performance yeah i think a little bit more body of work out of my boy brokey and we can see some like yeah yeah we i'm really excited about brokey's young player definitely got growing to do under a great in-game leader for it in the form of Carrigan. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for Brokey. I'm excited for Brokey going forwards. I don't think I can justify putting him ahead of legends like JW and Fallen just yet. But, you know, he's definitely working on it. And yeah, if I had to kind of uh, arrange this tier, I'm going to do it uh, like this. That is it, guys. Um, obviously, quite a few in the don't know, but in general, they're not, you know, typically top tier orpers. No offense to any of the guys down there. I'm sure a lot of them are good players, and maybe some of them, if I saw them play more, I'd be more excited about. But yeah, um, I think I would uh, kind of back the rest of the tier list. I think it's all pretty reasonable. I think there are a couple of arguable ones for sure, but in general, I think this is probably pretty fair. Let me know down in the comments, guys. Get going on your roasts or your, you know, agreement. If you think this tier list is wicked sick or if you think it's fucking terrible, let me know down in the description. In the description? Eh? Am I high? In the comments below. Yeah, like it, comment, do all the usual stuff that helps me out. Love you guys. Long time. The support I've been getting recently has been really good. I massively appreciate it. And if you did not like it, you're probably Kenny S. Even though I put him in S tier. I mean, because I, I rinsed his tier list in the other video. Yeah, you, you get it. Right? <laughs>